because we have some problems in the polynomial and rational inequality section that I am getting questions on. And I wanted to address those questions um, in the video. So uh, this particular problem, there's a couple of problems in this section where they give you a picture and you basically need to determine what the solution is gonna be based on the picture. So for this particular problem, they give you a graph and they want you to write the solution. So let me screenshot this and take it here. So the first part is asking you for part A, part A is asking, um, where is the f of x greater than zero? Where is the f of x greater than zero? So f of x is like y, right? So if I said this in another way, I would say where is y greater than zero? Where is y greater than zero? So we would have to look at the picture and determine that, right? So let me blow up this picture. Make this picture a little bigger so we can take a look at it and determine whether or where on this graph <coughs> is the Y greater than zero. So let me post this and let's take a look. So let me get my different color here. Uh, no, let's we'll stick with red. So we want to know where the Y values are greater than zero. So if I look at this graph, we kind of did this in class. All of these values on the graph are greater than zero. All the Y values are greater than zero. Once I start going down here, I have Y values that are negative. So I don't want those as part of my solution, right? Then I start going up and right here is where I start seeing Y values that are greater than zero. And then I start going down and I don't want those to be included. Okay. So basically your solution is going to be all of the squiggly lines that you see on here. So if you look at both sets of squiggly lines, all of those have Y values that are greater than zero. Now they want you to display your answer in interval notation. So interval notation, you're basically telling me what are the X values where the Y value is greater than zero. So your interval notation for this would be, it starts with negative infinity. No, my hand hit that, sorry. So it would be negative infinity up to zero. And I'm gonna put a parenthesis because they don't want equal to zero. This problem basically says, I just want where f of x is greater than zero, not equal to zero. So that's why I have a parenthesis instead of a bracket. Because if I put a bracket, that means I include zero. Union with, what is this, three to four? three to four and I put parentheses on each side of three and four because at three is equal to zero at four is equal to zero I don't want those I want everything in between those so that would be my solution let me plug that in and see if this works so parentheses negative infinity to zero union with three to four so yeah that works let's look at the next part it says f of x is less than or equal to less than or equal to so let me delete this part right okay so we want where the f of x is less than or equal to so we're looking at, let me erase this part. Now we're looking at the second part, right? I want to know where the f of x is less than or equal to. So f is 
less than or equal to zero. Okay, f of x is the same thing as saying y. So y is less than or equal to zero. Let's go back to our graph, right? So we want everything that's less than or equal to zero. So if I start up here, all of these are greater than zero. I don't want that. Uh-oh. Oh. I'm like, where did that come from? Oops. Okay. So here. All of these up here will be greater than zero. I want the stuff down here. All of this is less than zero. Mm. And when I go up, all of these up here, I don't want those. And then I go down. All of these are less than zero. So my solution will be all the stuff that is squiggly line right here. Now, if I did interval notation for what I see here, I would go from zero to three, zero to three on the X axis, but I'm actually putting a bracket this time because this problem says less than or equal to. If it says equal to, you gotta use brackets. And then it goes from four, bracket four to infinity with a parenthesis, and infinity always uses parenthesis. Okay, keep that in mind. So zero to three, bracket, zero to three, union, bracket four to infinity. Okay, so that's that problem. Let's see where we wanna go next. Oh, let's do this one. Okay, we'll do this one and then this should be enough to get us through. So, um, the first part says they want to know where f of x is greater than zero. We got a new graph here. So f of x is greater than zero. So where is your y value greater than zero? So let's take this to my whiteboard real quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, sorry. I'm all over, okay. Let's delete all of this. Now let's paste our new problem. Um, okay, so we wanna know where our, for this first part, where Y is greater than zero, where y is greater than zero, and let's blow the picture up. Boom, I'll screenshot that. And, okay, y value is greater than zero. So, let's do green, why not? Um, so we want where the Y value is greater than zero. So if we look here, I'm going from left to right on the graph, right? If I start down here, all of these Y values are less than zero. They're actually, they're negative. So I don't want those. Let's cross those out. I don't want those. Now I start up here. This is greater than zero. This is greater than zero, 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 all, all the way till I get to actually the origin, right? All of those are greater than zero. Once I cross the origin, I start going down, and these are values I don't want. That's less than zero, okay? Then I start back up here. These are greater than zero. These are greater than zero, greater, 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 all the way here. So the part that I want is the squiggly line. So let's get rid of these. I don't want that. I don't want these X's down here. I only want the part that's greater than zero. So if I put this in interval notation, it will be, what is this? 
It isn't negative because they want to know the x value. It wouldn't be negative infinity to zero because it actually stops right here at this thing called the asymptote that we learned about in this chapter. This little dotted line is an asymptote at negative three. So it actually goes from negative three to zero. Negative three to zero. Now I'm putting a parenthesis on both sides. I'm putting a parenthesis with the negative three because the graph is never going to touch negative three because negative three is asymptote. And then I'm putting a parenthesis at zero because it says greater than, not greater than or equal to. So that's why I have that. And then union, uh, it goes from, has, has an asymptote here at x equals one. So one, two, now this one actually goes on to infinity. So this will be negative three, zero, and then one, two, infinity. Let's see if they like this answer. Negative three, negative three, zero, union. One to infinity. Okay, and so for the next answer, it says it wants to be less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero. So basically opposite of everything that you see here. Let me leave the green part there, right? The green part is greater than zero. This red part that I'm about to do the squiggly line with, this is the negative part. This is the less than or equal to. So here, that's less than or equal to. So the red part, if I was to put the red part in interval notation, it would go from negative infinity up to the asymptote, which is negative three. And then it would go from zero to, what is this, the asymptote is one. So zero to one. So you're basically just doing the opposite. So negative infinity to negative three union. What was it, zero to one? No! Oh, why did I get that symbol? I got this message because if I go back, let me show you, I made an error, go back. So look at this. So it goes from negative infinity to negative three. Now let me erase the green part so you can understand what I did wrong on here. Okay, so we're looking at the red part, right? So it goes from negative infinity to negative three. So it doesn't touch negative three because negative three is an asymptote, right? We learned that. And the graph never touches the asymptote. But then if you look at the second part, it starts at zero right here. It starts at zero right here. And it actually touches at zero because we want less than or equal to. Because it says less than or equal to, I should actually include the number zero right here. So this, instead of it being a parenthesis, it should have been a bracket. Now, it still will be a parenthesis with the one because the one is the asymptote. So made an error on that. So let me go back here and put bracket and then that should fix it. Yes, excellent. So I hope that is helpful for this section. There's about four or five problems in this section, just looking at the picture and determining what the solution is gonna be. So I wanted to make sure I did a video to clarify that. Hope this helps.